Good morning. My name is Faisal Welpley. I work with the NetMath program at University of Illinois. Uh, this talk, titled Automated Test Generation, is based off of a Mathematica package, Mathematica application, that I started working on two years ago. A uh, quick history about NetMath. Uh, it started off as calculus and Mathematica. Uh, professors at U of I, Ohio State, got together under an NSF grant to develop Mathematica-based calculus reform project. Uh, the students will work on computers with Mathematica notebook, text, input, graphics, all available to them. They get to modify code, run code, and use that as part of their homework assignments. The NatMath program started with uh, approaching this idea to high schoolers, rural high school in Illinois. Uh, I think the name NatMath actually took on 1996, but the seeds for it were planted before that. So I'm actually being modest when I say NetMath is the longest running and most successful online mathematics program in the world. We have several different modes of uh, operation. You can look us up online, uh, netmath.illinois.edu. Uh, Self-paced rolling enrollment is something that you don't uh, get uh, quite a lot of. Students can sign on at any time. They get 16 weeks to complete the program. Uh, but we also do still the partner high school programs. And uh, for UIUC students only, we take on summer students. So that's enough history. And there's going to be a lot of live demo here. The actual slides doesn't contain all that much interesting stuff. The problem I was presented was that we are writing paper exams on a regular basis. We're handcrafting them. If you, if you ever teach a class, I assume you wrote paper exams. Of course, in 2016, you might be wondering why am I still writing paper exams. Well, that's a, that's a long history, established uh, reasons why we still use paper exams. We try to de-emphasize them. Our homework assignments are worth more than our exam sc uh, scores, but they still worth something uh, like 40% of their grade come from exams. So we handcraft these exams, put them in front of the students, uh, proctored. Uh, they send us back the exams, we grade them, and they get response feedback on that exam. What we would like to do is automate the process. Uh, and this, this idea of automation is it's very interesting because what we, what we started designing was a database because we know what kind of questions we want to ask. So we started with a database where we started populating questions and answers. And the database is uh, parameterized. So uh, some cer certain elements of the question can be generated on the fly. So let's take a look at one of these databases here. So this is an example database for our Math 241 course, which is a multivariate vector calculus course. This is all notebook, uh, Mathematica notebook uh, with uh, interface elements to let the author of these questions to create questions and specify an answer for this question and set metadata. They can set metadata, things like difficulty level of this question, what, what score, like how to weight the score, uh, the type of the question, because we do ask a lot of uh, conceptual questions in addition to computational questions, and some keywords. These keywords can be chosen from the library. We sort of have um, made up this index of keywords that you can pull from, so you don't have to write it from scratch. You can still do it, but there's a nice library to choose from to sort of keep your keywords um, uniform in a sense. And it's been working out quite nicely. Like this is, a, this is an actual test bank with a lot of questions in there. And these green blob that you see are actually parameterizations. So here, uh, we can actually take a look at one of these. If I go to edit this, it just comes up in a dialog box that allows me to specify a label for this, what code I want, uh, a description for this uh, piece of code, and I can preview this code uh, as I'm writing this, editing this. The input line here is uh, dimmed out, which means it's not going to show up on the exam. I can show that to you by clicking this preview button, which would generate the exam, uh, generate the question as you would preview it. 
somewhere. My previous better than the black screen, by the way. I'm going to get us off of this and hit preview here. So that's how a preview will look like. So that's one preview. And I, I said this was parameterized, so let's see what happens if I generate another preview. Oh, I get the same question, but the parameterized elements which get generated every time I click preview shows up uh, differently in the exam. So same question, different element parameterized. So it gives me a lot of control as an author of the exam. I, if I know what kind of questions I'm going to be asking, I can even write one exam and cater to you know, multiple students uh, in, the, in the same class, but they all get their own different numbers. But it's, it's, it's a lot of work because I, I have to author this question. There's, there's nothing automatic about that part. This is my database of questions. Actually, this is NetMath database of questions. So uh, don't use this one. And we have tons and tons of this. Um, we threw a lot of uh, teaching assistants, TA's effort into creating these, uh, these questions. And they, they, they did a lot of, lot of work uh, generating ideas for questions, what kind of things should be parameterized, or what kind of things should not be parameterized, especially when you're asking conceptual questions. It's really hard sometimes to come by parameterization, uh, which elements should be parameterized. Uh, so, so we got this database now, questions and answers. What's the next step? The next step turned out that we want to get out of full screen. What's the template? So template is where I want to specify the layout of the questions, how I want the paper exam, uh, or how I want to pull my questions from this database to slot into uh, my paper exams. So a template file will look like this. Again, another math uh, Mathematica notebook uh, that I open up and set, and, and start inserting these uh, this, this tells, these blobs. And I can use those keywords uh, metadata, and, uh, and keywords and other metadata to sort of specify what type of question should appear in question one, what type of question should appear in question two. So this keyword says I need a vector question in question one or, or a lines, and a lines question in question two. So by using these keywords and all this other metadata, there's a build process that I'm gonna run in a second that will dive into my database of questions and try to fill these templates in with an actual exam. And that's what this button is for. So once I have a template, I hit build an exam, I get Spinny, 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 and boom. There's an exam. And it comes with the solution key, uh, all the parameterization filled in. Uh, and anything that needs to be random is random. Anything that needs to be generated during runtime is generated. So I, now I can save this for myself as the grader, as the instructor, whoever's grading the exam, so I can see a set of question and answers. Uh, this is also printable. So I can take this and print it as PDF because you know, we're doing this on paper. So now we have a paper form of our solution and answer key. How does that look in, uh, in the exam view? That's not what I want. So I also have a button here to flip this between how the solution and answer key, solution key looks to how the actual exam looks. So this is how, this is what, you know, eventually I put in front of student. Not quite a ready product yet. Does anybody see a problem with this? I can, I can print this out, by the way, so I can put this in PDF and you put this in front of students. Sorry? 
<laughs> there's no place to write it. <laughs> That's a difficult problem to solve. How much space, do, I don't know if you noticed, there is a line for spaces, how much space. But when you're writing questions, you have no idea how much space you want to give. And even if you know exactly how much space you want to give them, it's going to mess up your line breaking when you print this out to paper. So what I did was to, this is probably a terrible idea, but what I did was <laughs> to, to uh, work with the cell size option in, in Mathematica that allows you to do this. I don't know if you can see this. Oh no, I can't demo this one, sorry. <laughs> because it's broken. <laughs> I, had a, I had an interface where you can drag your, your, your enlarge your cell. I mean, the, the, the easy way to do it would just be to add your white spaces here so that when, um, when the students get it, they have enough white space. Uh, and you can see the line break there. So if I don't have enough space, there's this bar here that tells me it's going to line break at the end of question two, which is maybe what I want. Uh, I can also insert page breaks manually so that I know it's not going to break in between a question. But that's a lot of manual effort that's going to go in uh, into actually finalizing this exam and putting it in front of a student. But that's the, that's the state of uh, the automated test generator at the moment. So the next, now that, now that we have this product, we've, we've done this once. We, we generated about 20 or so exams uh, for the summer, and the process still needs to be smoothed out. There, there was some flaws here and there, uh, but it survived first round. I do, and, and I kind of have it. I just don't know if where it is sitting or where it should be sitting uh, that is appropriate. Right now, it's sitting as part of the uh, database, which is far removed from, from the exam. Well, it is one step removed from getting the exam. But even if, I, if, even if I add this parameterization, I don't think the final product is going to be completely manual free. You're still going to have to have a human being sort of look through it, make sure, uh, yeah, I wanted 10 spaces, that's what I said, but I'm looking at it right now, I don't want 10 spaces. So you've got to have to have that manual interaction with this, because it is, it is going to you know, end up on the paper. Uh, so it, even if I had that option, it's not going to be completely automated still. My worry. Yes? Somebody's made one of these things, right? Can you go back and you know extract from the test um, what it was about? Namely, you know, is there metadata here which says problem two is testing blah blah blah, right? Right. So that so that after the fact, uh, we just get one of these documents or some bundle of spin. Can we figure out what was it that was being tested here at what frequency? Because suppose you're making the next test, right? Uh, we already gave a problem like this before, right? Or we already did a lot with that product, but we want to do more with, I don't know what. You know what I mean? So I just wonder about that. There's no, well, okay, to answer your first question, uh, we teach, I believe, nine courses and varying, in varying number of uh, student enrollments. I think highest we have is like 100, 150 students, and the lowest is like 20 students. So let's say a collection of 250 students in a semester that we teach, uh, but spread over 10, 9, 10 courses. So yes, we went to generate uh, the first uh, midterm exam, final exam for all these courses, and we want to do that again, process that process again next year. So none of this is going to it's going to be repeated use for these. So that's, that was the use case. As for 
tying this back up. There's no reporting sense if that's what you're looking for. You, know, you can match this question coming from the template. That exam was produced by clicking the build exam button on this template. So you do have a one-to-one -one correspondence. And you can locate this, this question back in the database. So you know where in the database this question got pulled from. So you have a cr another cross-check between why did this set of criteria uh, pull in that question. So I have vectors and less than two as the keywords here. This one has vectors and less than two as, as a keyword. The build, the algorithm for picking this can be refined. That was one, going to be one of my next steps, how these things are matched. Right now, they're, they're, there's some sort of uh, algorithmic ranking, but it's, it's very, very um, simplistic. There's nothing preventing me from uh, working on that uh, more to, to make that better. But also, can, I think we can collect data like that and make a report of, all right, how many times you know, this question was used, or how many times questions of that type got used in an exam. I never really thought about that, but it certainly can be done. That's a great question because I don't have to. <laughs> I don't write these questions. But yes, a lot of TAs had, uh, had run into the problem. And it takes a, a, a lot of mental power to, to decide how you want to constrain your parameterization so you don't run into square root of 22 <laughs> in your exams. But that's a, that's the question that we have to address at the time of writing the questions. This is why we, I, I built in all this preview stuff so that you can click on this multiple times, get different variations of this, and make sure you know, your answers key is something that can be solved by hand because this is paper exam. They need to be able to solve this by hand. So how many people still give paper exams? About as much as I expected. How many people would like to not give paper exams? <laughs> there are a couple. I, don't, I, I feel like we are in a day and age that we should stop paper exams. I know that's easier said than done. I've, I've been working with university for one year. I, I'm, I'm slowly getting the hint. But I don't know, paper exams seems uh, Seems like a legacy carryover. No, we should. Oh, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody.